Our happy Victory <laughs> Friday, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being with us. Taking a live look, dark and early over downtown Denver, getting ready for a much chillier yes. day than we've seen in quite a while. Going to be in the 50s today, but grab your jacket as you head out the door, and this time keep your jacket yeah. as we move throughout, throughout the, the weekend. It's yeah. going to get colder. Exactly. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. TGIF. I'm Jordan Chavez. And I'm Erica Lopez in for Corey Rose this morning. Yeah, it's time to actually bust out the winter gear for the weekend, Keely. Right. Keep the jacket through the weekend, but then by about Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, put it back again in the closet because we'll be back to temperatures in the 70s. But yes, a, certainly a cool down. We have a cold front moving through, a storm system moving in. We're going to get snow in the high country and uh, temperatures dropping down well below normal. About 10 degrees below normal for this time of the year. Our forecast highs right now, very mild. We're at 47 degrees, so temperatures dropping in the metro area, a cold front dropping down from the north behind that very, very chilly air mass. We're at 45 in Colorado Springs, 51 in Lyman. Leadville checking in at 30 degrees right now, 34 in Crumbling, 51 at west in Grand Junction. And again, clouds will increase as we head into the afternoon. Temperatures topping out in the mid 50s. We'll call it 56 degrees for forecast high for the Denver metro area today. And the rain, the precipitation much needed moves in this afternoon along the I-25 corridor and possibly even even and isolated thunderstorms. But again, the other big story will be the chilly temperatures. We're talking about 50s, 60s across the northeastern quadrant of the state. Head down to the southeast. That's where you'll find still the 70s and 40s, 50s to low 60s in the high country. Topping our weather impact headlines for today. Again, those late day showers after about 3 o'clock. It's looking like those showers will move into the metro area. This weekend, very winter like storm weather up in the high country where we're talking feet of snow across the southern mountains next week sunny and mild and we return to more summer like weather more details on that coming up in your full forecast in just a bit Keely, thank you so much 602 is your time for this thursday morning taking a live look right now of i-25 on the north and southbound lanes at the moment you can see both sides of i-25 traffic there is flowing nicely we are starting to see traffic volume pick up though on the southbound lanes so i do want to switch things over to our main maps for those taking northbound i-25 right near the castle rock area heading up north uh, taking the i-225 corridor you're looking at a 16 minute drive and here are your drive times before you head out the door downtown to the tech center still looking good 14 minute drive both directions brianna thank you Today, the former director of Apollo Funeral and Cremation Services in Littleton is set to be arraigned. Now, news reporter Courtney Yoon joins us live from the Denver District Court. And Courtney, Miles Harford will be in court in just a few hours. Yeah, that's right. Good morning, Erica. Miles Harford was arrested earlier this year. He faces charges for allegedly leaving a woman's body inside of a hearse for a year and a half and then giving her family someone else's remains. Now, Miles Harford is expected to enter a plea to two counts of forgery, one count of abuse of a corpse and one count of theft, according to the Associated Press. Back in February, investigators found the body of Christina Rosales, who died in 2022 in a hearse at Harford's rented home after he had been evicted. Police, police also found cremated remains of at least 30 people who died between, between 2012 and 2021. Colorado's funeral home regulations were some of the weakest in the nation, according to the Associated Press, but cases like this have led to reform. Mark Dacumis used Apollo Funeral Homes to handle his late wife Jennifer's remains. She was wearing two rings worth $25,000. All of a sudden, I'm like, so... When am I going to get the ashes back and my wife's rings, my wife's wedding rings back? And he would say, oh, soon. Don't worry, I'll get them to you. Harford later told Dakumis the rings were cremated along with his wife. Dakumis sued and won a default judgment, but says Harford never paid. Now, today's hearing is scheduled in the docket as an arraignment set to begin at 8.30 this morning. An arraignment was on the schedule once before back in August. At that time, prosecutors had asked for a continuance. We will have a crew inside the courtroom during this hearing, and we'll be sure to update you on air and online. Live in Denver, Courtney Yoon, 9 News. All right, Courtney, thank you so much. The state is ordering a gold mine tourist attraction in Cripple Creek to stop giving tours all while it investigates an elevator malfunction that killed a tour guide and left a dozen people trapped a thousand feet underground. The Molly Kathleen gold mine is closed for the season and it cannot reopen until an investigation is complete. 
46 year old Patrick Wire was killed there last week. Investigators have not said exactly what happened or what might have caused this malfunction. The mine's last inspection was in late August and the state did not find any violations or hazards at that time. This week, dozens of people gathered in Cripple Creek to pay tribute to the tour guide who died in that mine. Community members lined the main strip of Cripple Creek as first responders held a procession for Patrick. That led to a ceremony allowing friends and family to share memories and words of appreciation for the brother, the father, and their friend. Many wore Chicago sports jerseys because Patrick was a big Chicago sports fan. Me and him probably have been to hundreds of games together. When I get back there in the next Bears game, I'm going to have a flag there flying for Patty. It was always great to see that every morning just to say, you know, Otis, Otis, where are you and where are you at these days? And I travel a lot, so uh, it's going to be hard to wake up to those text messages not there anymore. A lot of broken hearts. Patrick leaves behind a seven year old son. A routine test on the water in Perry Park recently showed radium levels at an all time high. The Perry Park Water and Sanitation District test for the radioactive metal four times a year. A sample taken in August showed the level at three to four times the usual amount and well above the federal limit. The water district cleaned its filters and tested again. That next sample was lower, but it was still at a level that the EPA says can come with an increased risk of cancer. Still, the state health department considers it safe to drink. After some treatment, a new round of testing is in the works. Radium is usually found in groundwater sources, which is where Perry Park gets their primary water supply. It's typical for Colorado towns. A judge in Colorado says the Denver Water Project to triple the size of Gross Reservoir was approved in violation of federal environmental protection laws. A bunch of environmental groups have been trying to stop the Gross Reservoir expansion and dam project since 2018. Denver Water is expanding and raising the dam, tripling the reservoir's capacity, a project that requires flooding 400 acres of land and half a million trees. Construction started in 2022 under a permit from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Yesterday, the judge ruled that permitting process didn't do enough to evaluate less environmentally damaging options or whether building a bigger reservoir is even necessary. It's unclear what the ruling actually means for the dam project. The judge didn't order construction to be stopped. She says that Denver Water will soon pause for the winter anyway, and she's concerned that a more abrupt halt could compromise the dam's integrity. Instead, both sides have two weeks to submit their proposed solutions. Back here in Colorado, the Pueblo County Clerk and Recorder Office is adding new security measures this election because of changes in election security laws. Possibly the biggest change the county is making is using the police department's real-time crime center. This allows the county and police to keep eyes on ballot boxes 24-7 to hopefully prevent any tampering. It's similar to the live stream cameras in Douglas County that we told you about yesterday morning, only these can't be viewed by everyone. The county is also installing a web weapons detection system. It's basically a new metal detector at the Pueblo County Government Building. There's been a new law that has been implemented in the last legislative session that prohibits guns in within 100 feet of a voter service polling center. So our office is in compliance with this law with the new weapons detection system we have in place. Rivera says all of these upgrades are being paid for with the $1.3 million grant they received. Most of that money went toward election security. These security measures will stay in place until election night. The state of Colorado announced how much people will be getting back in Tabor refunds for 2024. It all depends on how much you make. Single filers will get between $177 and $565. The scale is doubled for joint filers with a maximum of $1,130. Under Colorado law, the state can only keep a certain amount of tax revenue each year. The extra money is returned in the form of a Tabor refund, which you claim when you're filing taxes. You can claim your 2024 refund when you file taxes next year. And for the first time in a long time, temperatures will be below what is normal for this time of the year. Our seasonal high 65, our forecast high for the Denver metro area today, 56 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. We will see some scattered showers move in after about 2, 3 o'clock this afternoon and possibly an isolated thunderstorm as we head into the overnight hours. Do you want to talk about some winter weather alerts in effect for this week and a winter storm warning for most of the San Juans where we could see a couple feet of snow. 
snow and winter weather advisories for higher elevations above about 10,000 11,000 feet where we could see several inches one to four inches across the mountains uh, in in those areas that are not under a weather alert breezy conditions those afternoon showers moving in this afternoon we're going to top out right around 56 degrees mid 50s tomorrow as well back in the upper 60s scattered showers on Sunday 70s mild and sunny for the work week. And some good news for those heading out the door at the moment. Denver to Boulder, you are looking still at a 17-minute drive. You can see we are very much in the green. If you're in the Broomfield area, heading into Boulder this morning. Right now, not seeing any delays as well in Commerce City, 76. Right now, it's looking pretty good. 11-minute drive. Speed times are clocking in at 66 miles per hour.